if I can get my fingers to work. Acts chapter 2, I probably don't, uh, don't need to turn there for these verses, and you probably don't either, any of you. Um, but I like to have it open just in case, because we might say read on, right? Praise the Lord. Um, let's go ahead and read it. This is kind of the, uh, just kind of a serious passage. And when the day of Pentecost, was fully come. Are there any Pentecostals in the house today? Just, just, just wondering. Uh, okay, apparently not. <laughs> that was a very quiet response. <laughs> oh man. Um, hey, y- y'all, y'all remember when, when, y'all remember when Pentecostalism was a little bit loud? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We just. I, 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 the spirit of God has not changed, but we've gotten older, right? So we just gotta, you know, do this thing and hope the rattle in our heads people are hearing. Um, I always, I always make fun. I don't go to a lot of concerts, but when we go to concerts, I always laugh about this and comment about it, you know, because the artists will come out on stage and say, you know, it, it doesn't matter what they say; it's always the same answer, right? It doesn't matter what the question is, but they'll come out and they'll say. How y'all doing tonight? And what's the answer? Woo! Right? Like, that's not even an answer. Like, like, you didn't even answer the question. Right? What does woo mean? You know? Um, are there any Pentecostals in the house today? Woo! Hey, all right. That sounds good. I like that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Well, uh, let's go ahead and read this. I got a little sidetracked. When the day... Pentecost was fully come. See, this should be exciting text for us, amen? Because we have experienced it, amen? Uh, some people read this and sadly they read it and it's words and it's and it's exciting words and it's words that causes them to, to wonder and be, and be interested. But I'm so excited, I'm so thankful that when I read these words, I can relate to these words, amen? And I understand Uh, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. We're, we're talking to, uh, today and continuing the series, Bring On the Fireworks. Uh, of course, we're not talking about sparklers and bottle rockets and, and mortars and things of that sort. Um, but we are using them sort of in, as an example. What I like about this text is it reminds me, I told you a couple weeks ago, well, I told you last week that we had taken the grandbabies to watch fireworks for the first time and uh, just to watch the excitement for them. Eliana told us as we were driving up and she caught wind that we were going to watch fireworks. And she said, she said to me, she said, Papa, I don't want to watch fireworks. <laughs> uh, she, was just, she was very adamant about that. But when the show started, uh, I said to her, I said, baby girl, we can, we can stay in the van and keep the windows up so it won't be loud and whatever. But when the show started, it only took her seeing one or two fireworks and she was ready to get out of the van. She, I want to get out and I want to watch it. And she wanted the whole, uh, the whole experience. There's something about those, those fireworks that just kind of inspire something in us, right? We just kind of, we want to see it. We want to hear it. We want the whole show and, 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 and all of that sort of thing. And I was thinking about that, and I read, that, you know, when you read this text, what was so, what's so interesting about this text is sort of the correlation, sort of how that fireworks is, is, a good, uh, is a good example of this, because the Bible says, on the day of Pentecost, they, they heard a sound, right? They heard a, a, a sound from heaven, and verse 3 says, and there appeared unto them. They heard and they saw. That was the experience they had in the Holy Ghost. And so uh, I I believe that that's the way that we ought to experience the the power of the Holy Ghost 
even today, amen? It ought to be something that we can hear and we can see and that is manifested and we can recognize, amen? Again, I, I wasn't trying to put anybody on the spot. I don't even know who yelled when, when we finally, because I, I, you know, I got to have my glasses on to see that far out. But but I think I could pick out a couple of voices, though. Uh, but uh, but the Holy Ghost should inspire some uh, some 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 demonstrations, some 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 excitement. So, Amen. Don't you don't you believe that, or am I just way off track? Has the Lord changed? Has this whole has this whole scene changed? I don't believe that it has. I don't buy into the idea that the Holy Ghost has grown tired or weary or just doesn't operate that way anymore or that that was just for that time and it's no longer for our time. I don't find that anywhere in the Word of God. In fact, I find that, that, that God changes not, amen, that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If on the day of Pentecost they heard something and they saw something, then we, when, when we get in the presence of God's people and in one accord and the Spirit of God begins to move, we should be able to recognize that the Spirit of God is moving. Amen? We should hear some things and see some things that we don't see every day and that don't happen just every day. I believe that, uh, I, I, I believe that the, the, the Holy Ghost is still active among us and needs to be active among us. Yes, amen. amen. And that not only our churches need some Holy Ghost fireworks, but our world needs to see some Holy Ghost fireworks. Yes, amen. amen. The works of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. It changes things. It, it, it changes perspectives. Eliana, like I said, didn't want to see. She didn't want to go to fireworks. We told her we, we told him we were going to do something fun. She was all excited. I, I, she was probably thinking Chuck E. Cheese or ice cream or something. Then she found out it was fireworks and said, that ain't fun. I don't want to go to fireworks. Amen. <laughs> but that all changed when she began to experience it. Yeah. So, wow, there's something to this. I long for a return. Don't you? I, I'm, some, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I long for the day that that whole, uh, that we start hearing that again. Yes. When folks walk into our church houses, or even just, not even in the church house, they come in contact with some Pentecostal believers, but people who are sold out and filled with the Holy Ghost, and, 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 and they recognize, wow, there's something to that. Amen. You don't see that every day. I, I, I like that. I'm excited about that. Praise the Lord. Well, that's not my sermon today. We started this uh, last week and just uh, talking about uh, talking about the fiery works of the Holy Ghost. We need the works of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. I don't ever want to preach without the Holy Ghost. I, 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 listen, I, sometimes, sometimes the Lord will play these little tricks on us. Brother Mike can probably testify to this as well. Uh, Mom, you get up behind the pulpit and God just says, let's see how you do for a couple minutes. Uh, if I don't let the wind blow for just a couple minutes here, let's see how you do. Just kind of gentle reminders of how much we need him. I don't like that. I don't like that. I want, man, before I get behind the pulpit, I want the spirit of God blowing in my direction. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let me get into this thing. We've been talking about this. July 4th is over. <sighs> Thank God. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm liking the last couple of nights have been a little quieter uh, for us. That's really good. A few nights ago, we had somebody decided to go right down to the bottom of our hill and blast off fireworks <laughs> in the open field there. And uh, if I'd have known they were that close, I'd have probably gone out and watched them. But I didn't know that. I just knew somebody was making a terrible racket. Amen. But anyway, let's, uh, let's get into this. What I, what I want to talk about and what we've been talking about, we talked about it last word, week, and we're going to get a little deeper into it today, is that the fire, the, the works of the Holy Spirit um, need to be active and present in our lives. 
and in our churches. Amen. One of the things I love reading the Gospels, uh, and, and when you read about the ministry, the earthly ministry of Christ, what I love hearing so, so is, 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 now I don't know if the disciples went out and hung posters on telephone poles. Probably not because they didn't have telephones, right? But I, <laughs> I, I don't know what the advertising campaign is. But I don't find anywhere in Scripture where there was a where there was a specific uh, ad exec that was added to Jesus' entourage, right? That there was somebody that was appointed just to to hang flyers and advertisements and that sort of thing. What I do see in Scripture is that I love I love when it says, "And it was noised abroad that Jesus was in the house." Amen. Blind Bartimaeus was sitting at the side of the road and he heard that Jesus was coming and it excited him because he knew when that guy shows up, things that we don't tend to see every day tend to happen. Right. And I believe that that is the influence that God wants for his church to have in this world, that people have grown really accustomed to a lot of things. And, 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 but I believe that God wants His church, the body of Christ, to be, to, to, to be so operational and, and functioning in the power and the manifestation of the Holy Ghost that people take notice. Listen, when those people are around, when, 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 when that group gets out and about, things tend to happen that don't happen every day. Amen? Amen? It should be noised abroad. I believe, you. I know the church has to advertise and do different things and, and put up different, uh, uh, put on different events and whatnot. And I, I've been in all the church growth stuff and all of that sort of thing and how to have a healthy and vibrant church and how to this and how to that. But I don't think there is any amount of advertisement that will ever, 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 ever compare to. And it was noised abroad that Jesus was in the house. Amen. It was noised abroad that the Spirit of God was moving in their midst. Amen. I desire for that. Anyway. All right. I got to find a place to jump into these notes or we're going to be in trouble. Go with me to Acts chapter 2. Um, you're already there. But go with me to verses 38 and 39. Because here's what happens. Um, when, when the power and the works of the Holy Ghost and fire are active and present in our lives as Christians, it will, it, the Spirit of God will be active and present when we come together corporately uh, in, our, in our worship services. And I believe that that is necessary. Amen. One of the things that we see here and that we need to understand is that the Holy Spirit... <laughs> is so important in our lives as believers that, that, that it's even uh, that, that God makes this promise in His Word and assures us that, listen, this is not something to keep to yourself. This is something that should be, that should be, uh, uh, that should be expressed and, and, uh, and highlighted and passed on from generation to generation. Look at this. Acts chapter 2. 38 and, uh, and 39. It says, Peter, of course, is preaching uh, under, the, uh, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And, uh, of course, when they heard Peter's preaching, the Bible says that they were moved, they were pricked in their hearts, and they were moved, and they began to inquire, Hey, uh, what is this and what shall we do? What are, yes, you've, you, you, you've, uh, you've shown us that, uh, that, we, that we've done wrong and, and, and we're responsible for some wrong. What should we do with this information? And here's what Peter says, verse 38 and 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But I love this next verse. It says, For the promise is unto you. Problem is, that's where we keep the promise so many times. We, we kind of want to bottle it up and keep it to ourselves. But Peter goes on and says, And to all that are, uh, or and to your children, and to our, all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. 
God, in, when it comes to His Spirit uh, within us, God doesn't want us to just keep the Spirit of God bottled up. But God wants us to turn it into a big spiritual uh, pass it on game. You ever play pass it on? Like, pass it on. So and so, this and that. So and so, this and that. And the other, pass it on. And, uh, and it can really come into some crazy things and morph into some, some crazy things by the time it gets all the way done being passed on, right? Uh, but God, real, I believe that's what God wants from us. If you have experienced the power uh, of the Holy Ghost at work and moving and manifesting in your life, God does not intend for you to keep it to yourself, but to pass it on. Yes. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, the Holy Ghost is important uh, for all believers at any age, at any stage of life. I truly do believe that. Last week we started talking about the, the fireworks. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, we just drew some examples from natural fireworks and then, and then how, that, how that can teach us about the works of the Holy Ghost and fire. The Holy Ghost is important for all believers. And we talked about last week, just to kind of get us started in this, that we talked about how that fireworks, uh, a fireworks display takes a lot of work and preparation. Amen? And, and, and you, you don't just show up and have a fireworks show. It takes some preparation. And likewise, if we want to be uh, empowered and, and operating in the power and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, it takes some preparation. It takes, some, uh, it, it takes preparing ourselves to be, to be vessels and conduits that the Spirit of God can flow through and work through. Amen? Because here's something you need to understand. God is a gentleman. Okay? The Spirit of God, I know everybody says, Oh, God, would you just take over and, and just this and, that, and just let me just black out and you just do whatever you want. And, and, and no, no, what, what God wants is for us. He doesn't want to have to knock us out in order to accomplish His will and purpose in our lives. God doesn't want to have to black us out and knock us out and, 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 and render us unconscious so that the Spirit of the Lord can have an, an opportunity to move and function and manifest in our lives. That's not what God's looking for. God's looking for some willing, uh, faithful vessels that would say, Spirit of the Lord in this place, Spirit of the Lord in this temple, have your way within me. I don't care what people say. I don't care what people think. I don't care if people look weird at me. I don't. I, it does not matter. What I want, God, is for you to move in my life by your spirit and by your power in the way that you desire to do. Amen? We've got to prepare ourselves for that. We talk about how that visiting a, a fireworks stand doesn't mean that you'll automatically have a fireworks display. You've still got to make some investment. You got to purchase those fireworks, and you got to set them up, and you got to light the wick, and you you you've got to make an investment. Amen. Just because you go to a Pentecostal church doesn't mean you live a, a Pentecostal life, right? Yeah. Just because you attend a spirit-filled church doesn't mean that you live a spirit-filled life. You've got to you've got to invest. You've got to engage. You've got to go all in, Spirit of the Lord. Have your way. Use me, God. Let me be a vessel that your spirit can move and manifest and have its way. Amen. We talked about how that the reason how that fireworks in the natural um, can be beautiful and can be exciting, but they have an inherent risk. There is an element of danger when you mess with fireworks. And I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that one of the reasons that, that we do not see the Spirit of God move within our churches in particular as much as we used to is because we have become so afraid. We've become so afraid, apprehensive, anxious, that, that something, if, if we allow the Spirit of God to move and have its way, that someone might someone might see or hear something that they don't understand. And they might, you know, that might that might cause, well, yes, people are going to see and hear some things that they don't understand. That's how the day of Pentecost, that's how God began the church. That, that, that's how the church 
really began. That's the origins, right? That these 120 believers were in the upper room in one accord. The Spirit of God fell upon them. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost. They spilled out of the room. They began to speak. And, and people from, uh, from, from different places and languages, they all heard them speaking in their own language. And they said, whoa, wait a minute. What's going on here? We don't understand this. That opened the door for Peter to be able to say, to say, listen, these are not drunk as you suppose. They have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. This is that which the Lord has prophesied would come. And it opened the door for him to be able to share and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. This world still needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And in order to be able to have a forum to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need the Holy Ghost of God to be getting people's attention and opening that door and opportunity for us to be sharing. This is that which was spoken and prophesied by God. I'll say one that we didn't talk about last week and then we're going to get into my message for today. Okay. I don't even know what time it is and I don't know how to work this way. So. Here's, here's, we, we have, we're, we're now, we're now removed from the Independence Day celebrations. Um, January, or, or, uh, no, we're not in January. Lord help us, uh, July. I don't even know what the date is, but I know the fourth has already come and gone, right? For this year. I want to tell you this. Fireworks don't have to be limited to one time a year or just to special occasions, especially when we're talking about the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. And sadly, what we have done is we have sort of relegated the, the, the move and the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost to certain uh, certain yearly events or certain calendar events. Like, for example, when we go to camp meeting, we expect there to be a move of the Holy Ghost. But why don't we expect the same move at, uh, in our churches on Sunday morning that we would expect when we go to a camp meeting service? Amen? I can remember... Uh, I can remember growing up in the church and every year we would look forward, uh, the young people would look forward to church camp because we understood this was a week. Yeah, we went to church camp for a week back then. I know that's 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 crazy, right? Because now church camp's like two or three days and we're exhausted. And, but we went to church camp and we would look forward to it. And I can remember because we just knew that when we got there, man, from the first service, it was just going to be an explosion of the Spirit of God and the powerful works of God and the manifestation. And, and we weren't disappointed and we'd spend a week. But then the other thing I remember is coming home and the first Sunday service after getting home from church camp. And it wasn't the same. And can I just tell you that it wasn't the same, not because, not because the Spirit of God is any different, but because our anticipation and expectation level was different. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the fireworks, if you will, the powerful works of the Holy Ghost should be something that we expect. That we expect. Every day that we wake up, if you're if you're a spirit filled believer, you should expect the spirit of God to lead you and guide you and comfort you and counsel you and direct you and manifest in mighty ways in your life, not just on Sunday, but every day. And when we come together in a corporate uh, setting such as this, we should come with an anticipation and an expectation that surely the Spirit of God is going to move in this place today. Amen? Amen. That was quiet, but I'm going to keep going. Amen. Well, I've got to get all this preach out. Because I've got a little teaching I want to do, and I've got a lot. Well, I've got actually a good bit of teaching I need to do today. So I'm going to try and stay on point. Hallelujah. Don't get scared. 
Don't run out screaming unless it's the Holy Ghost, okay? Um, when I tell you this, but what I want to do is sort of switch gears here real quick. Because after we talked about all of that and set this up, what I want to do today is I want to talk about how the fire works. Okay? I want to talk about what the Spirit of God what the purpose of the Spirit of God is in our lives and in our in, in, in our corporate uh, uh, service to God, in our corporate church settings as well. I want to talk about the purpose of the Spirit of God. I'm going to say this probably more times than you want to hear it today. Um, I'm going to, I know I'm going to say it more than once or twice, okay? Because I want it to get in your spirit. And it's not, it's not my quote, but I love it. One of my favorite things that I've ever heard uh, our uh, a general overseer of the Church of God, Dr. Tim Hill, one of the, my favorite things that I've ever heard him say, and if you've never heard Tim Hill preach on the Holy Ghost, you need to look it up and watch it because that brother can, can do it. But one of my favorite things I've ever heard him say is this, that the Spirit of God is not given to us for our enjoyment, but for our employment. Amen. There is a work that God has, God has given His Spirit to, 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 His, uh, to, to His children, to believers. Uh, there's a work, there's a purpose behind the promise. Jesus said you, to His disciples, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be My witnesses. Amen. There's a purpose. Amen? Alright. So we're going to look at, we're going to look at that uh, this morning. It isn't enough to want the fire. We've got to understand why we need the fire. Amen? What the purpose is. Listen, if we just want the Holy Ghost to move in our midst or be a part of our lives just, just because we want to feel good and every once in a while get one of those Holy Ghost shivers that runs down our back and the, our whole bodies break out in, you know, in, in, in Holy Ghost goose pimples. If that's your only point, uh, if that's your only reason for wanting the Holy Ghost, you have missed the point altogether. Because the Holy Spirit is not given for our enjoyment but for our employment. Amen. And so we need to understand what the purpose is. I, I, I want to preach on this today and teach this out a little bit today um, because most Pentecostals have become so focused on, 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 on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which I'll just, just preview. Uh, we'll talk about that, Lord willing, next week. Uh, the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Um, but, but, but we've kind of gotten to this place that we've overlooked the purpose. What is the purpose? What's the why? I think God has been bringing me back this whole year to that, to that question. What's the why? What's the purpose? What's the reason? Amen? Too often uh, we've restricted the Holy Ghost and kind of put God in a box uh, and restricted the Holy Ghost to, like I said, just a few certain calendar events. Oh, when there's this, when there's this top-notch, internationally known preacher, then sure, at this meeting, then surely the Holy Ghost is going to move in. But we don't expect the same when we come together. You know what? I, I can remember. I can remember. I've told you this before. I grew up in the church. I was excited. You know, we grew up in church where the Holy Ghost moved and, and, and manifested and had its way. And listen, it didn't even have to be a church service. I had an anticipation and expectation every time that the church got together. I don't care if we were getting together for a wiener roast. It, I expected that the Holy Ghost was going to move and do something. Has God changed? No. But we have. Yeah. It's time we get back to understanding what's the why. Amen? So let's, let's get into this. If you were to write a job description for God, like, what would you write? Like, this is, this is God's job description. Like, you, you might say, well, God, uh, God's, uh, you know, the, the, the purpose for God's position is to make sure everything in the universe is working properly and none of the planets collide. Right? Uh, make sure all the stars are still burning and, you know, and, uh, the, 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 
God is to look out for orphans and widows and those who are down and out because God's got a compassion. And God is supposed to love everybody because God is not just a God of love. God is love. And, and, and God is supposed to hold everyone accountable for their actions and attitudes because God is a just God. It would be pretty easy to write God's job description, right? Based on our understanding, not that we could ever fully comprehend all that, that God does and is, right? But uh, what about Jesus? We could write a job description for Jesus, right? Pretty, pretty simply, you know, Jesus is uh, Jesus is the, 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 the Savior. Jesus is supposed to forgive sins and, and, and wash sins away, okay, by His blood. Jesus is to provide healing for our bodies because by His stripes we are healed, right? Jesus is, is supposed to change our hearts. And, 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 and transform and, and, and save us and, and set us free and deliver us. Yes, we understand that. But what about the Holy Ghost? What if you had to write a description, a job description for the Holy Ghost? What would his job description be? What would those points, what would those bullet points, those expectations and requirements, what would they be? Is the Holy Ghost, is, is the purpose of the Holy Ghost to make our services powerful? Is it to give us goosebumps? Is the Spirit of God just for a few gifts that operate occasionally? It causes us to say, wow, that was cool. I hope I get to see that again before I die. You know? I like this one because it, it always cracked me up. I told you I've grown up in the church. I love the church. But one thing that has always cracked me up is there is an ongoing definition of of what it means when the Spirit of God takes over and really moves in a service. What is it? The preacher didn't even preach today. <laughs> like that, I'm sure if we were, if the church collectively were to come together and write a job description for the Holy Ghost, one of the bullet points, one of the requirements would be occasionally the preacher needs to shut up and not preach because the Spirit of God moved. Right? I mean, that just always, always cracks up. Man, the Spirit of God really moved today. Oh, yeah, what happened? Preacher didn't even preach. <laughs> what is it, God? You know? <laughs> Amen. But how many of you know that the Spirit of God, the purpose, the, the, the why, the reason is so much more than that? Thank God for all of that stuff. Thank God for the Holy Ghost gives people. Thank God for the preacher didn't even preach today. Thank God for all of that stuff. But the Spirit of God, we need the Holy Ghost of God for, for, for so much more than that. So let's get into it. Don't get scared. I've got ten to go through today, okay? Nobody screamed. You're paralyzed in fear, right? Let me get over it. Here's number one. I'm going to try it from this point on. I'm going to try and teach this at and try and stick to my notes. Pretty much. Okay? You ready? Here's number one. And we've got to set all this up because next week, Lord willing, we're going to get into the gifts of the Holy Ghost. How many of you have questions about that? Okay? We won't answer all of them. Well, maybe we will because nobody raised their hands, so there are no questions <laughs> to answer. So it's going to be an easy week for me, y'all. Anyway, here we go. Number one, the Holy Spirit brings regeneration. By the way, I don't want to just tell you what I think. I want to tell you what the Word of God says, okay? The, the Holy Spirit brings regeneration. Now, this word regeneration is only found twice in Scripture. And one of these deals specifically with the role of the Holy Spirit. It's found in Titus chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. I'm going to put my glasses on here. Uh, and it says, but after that, the, after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. Look at verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. This word regeneration literally means a new birth, a new beginning. A, 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 uh, actually, the Greek word here is the word uh, palingensia, and and uh, and it is uh, it's used uh, in a lot of classical writing. Uh, these classical writers will use this word with reference to the changes produced by the returning of spring. 
You know that time that everybody, oh, look at that, the flowers are in bloom. And, and, and what seemed dead is now starting their signs of life and the flowers are starting to, uh, and, and oh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful time. That's really what this word uh, references. It's that, it's that reconstitution, it's that reemerging of life, new birth. Amen. It is a, it is a revival, a regeneration of our heart. In other words, one of the Holy Spirit's roles in our lives is to work with uh, with with Christ. Uh, listen, listen. I'll just say it like this: If anything that you, if, if I'll just put this test out here, right? Because this is one of those things we talked about last week. We're afraid that something, if we allow the Spirit of God to move, there might be some things that uh, that, that will get done or said or whatever. Uh, and, and, and in the name of this is the Holy Ghost movie, but it's really not the Holy Ghost movie. If you ever want a real test, here's the first thing you can do to test it. Does it line up with Scripture and does it elevate the person of Christ? Amen. Anyway. Just a little extra. So, so the Holy Spirit's role, one of the Holy Spirit's roles is, is, is to work in accordance with Christ in changing our hearts. To bring rebirth and regeneration and renewal to us. To make everything new. If you've been, if you've been saved or, 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 or if you haven't ever have any intention of being born again, this is the Holy Spirit's uh, the Holy Spirit will have a very significant role and, pros uh, and, and purpose hand in that process. It's one of the many ways that the Holy Ghost works within us, drawing us to Christ, drawing us to faith. Drawing us to an understanding of our need for Christ. Drawing us to a place of repentance. Drawing us to truth that, that this regeneration of heart can take place. Here's number two. I know you don't believe it. It's got to be God, right? Number two. Uh, the Holy Spirit convicts of sin. John 16, verses 7 and 8. Jesus says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now look at this next verse. And when he has come, when the Holy Ghost has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Amen. Another translation says when he has come, he will convict the world uh, in, in respect of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. This is another powerful work. This is another purpose of the work of the Holy Ghost in our lives. One of the key fireworks, if you will, is that the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. And this is not a time, if you're saved, if you're born again, this is not the time for you to check out of this sermon and say, oh, well, I'm saved. This, this part doesn't apply to me. So let me tell you something. This happens, yes, it happens leading up to salvation, but it definitely continues after the point of salvation. Can I get an amen, somebody? Yes. You just outed yourself, sinner. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. No, no, we need this work uh, within our lives because listen, uh, listen, the Holy Spirit if it needs to be at work up to the point of salvation, but continuing on after salvation to convict us of those things. He's our spiritual umpire, our spiritual referee, if you will. He's the one that blows the whistle when we're about to commit a foul or step out of bounds. Or when we do something wrong, he's the one that calls uh, the foul. He's the one that says, uh-uh, that's not right. You need to reel it back in. Right? right? And see, a lot of Christians seem to have a hard time knowing what's right or wrong. It's, it's a really odd to me how that in this world, uh, it seems this, is, this has become a big problem. That, 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 that Christians, the Christian world even, has come to a point where we really don't understand how to clearly define what's right and what's wrong. Amen. I don't have time to throw out statistics uh, today because I've got 10 points to get through. But if I did, 
Uh, they're, they're shocking. They're staggering. Do you know that it's like, eight, I'll throw out one. Do you know that there's like 86% of, of um, full gospel churches? I, I still don't understand this. Um, not full gospel churches. Um, Bible-based Christian churches, 86%. 86%. Of those attending members still believe that there's more than one way to heaven. 86%. That Jesus is not the only way. Jesus is just a way of, out of many. 86%. That's completely contradictory to the word of God. Jesus himself says, I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He says, I'm the gate. He says, I'm the door. How much clearer can that get? It doesn't get any clearer than that. 86% who claim to adhere to the word of God and follow the instruction of the word of God, but still say, yeah, I'm not sure about that one way thing. So this is important even beyond uh, even even beyond the point of salvation, right? Because we seem to have a hard time uh, deciding and knowing what's right or what's wrong. But if you have the Holy Ghost at work within your life, He will help you to discover and to remember and to understand what you should do. The Holy Ghost is that is that is that like special ingredient, right? That essential ingredient that will give you the ability to live holy and to live righteous before God. Go to Galatians chapter 5. I think I'll hang out here for just a minute. Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 16. It tells us the secret to remaining holy even in a messed up society. Watch this. You got it there? So this I say then... Walk in what? The Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We're going to read through verse 25. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. We talked about this in our Bible class a couple, uh, a Bible study a couple weeks ago. Um, and, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would do. But, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now look here. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There is no condemnation. Amen. Look at the next verse. And they that are Christ, belong to Christ, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. How can I remain faithful to God and to God's purpose for my life even in a messed up uh, 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 time, a messed up society, even in a time where nobody knows right from wrong and morality is a thing of the past and, 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 and everybody just, everybody wants to just, uh, 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 just uh, uh, you know, uh, nobody, nobody wants to have any clear definition of what is right and what is wrong and, and, and what's acceptable in God's sight and what is not. How, how can I maintain my focus and continue to live in accordance with God's word and God's will for my life? Here's the answer. You need the Holy Ghost at work in your life, guiding your life, guiding your heart, guiding your mind, guiding your steps. Amen. And yes, convicting you in those moments that you get out of line. 
Number three. The Holy Spirit comforts in times of sorrow. This one's a little easier to swallow, isn't it? We all like this. John 14, 16. Jesus said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. See, I have no doubt as we come into this place today and even as we're sitting here today and, 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 and we're doing our best to smile and be involved and, and, and all of this, but many of us, our minds are in other places and, and, and stuck on other situations and maybe hardships or challenges that we're facing in our lives. Some of, some of you are facing some really dark moments, some really uh, dire situations. Some of your lives and situations are in absolute chaos and disarray. And you, you may be at a place in your life you don't know which way's up. Because it just seems like there's so much that you're dealing with on a constant daily basis. Your life just feels out of control. How do you keep it all together in those times, in those settings, in those types of surroundings? How do you face death in your family and continue to have the peace of God? How, how, how do you face financial struggles and still walk in the assurance that God is in control? How do you, how do you face impossible circumstances, things you know that you cannot overcome and, and trust that there will be a way made where there is no way. How 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 do you how do you stand in a in a seemingly hopeless situation and continue to search for a door? How do you make it through when everyone else is turning to to drugs and? And and, and 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 alcohol and 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 and, and, and things of this world and and, and 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 living in lifestyles and things that, that are not ordained by God. How 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 do you how do you make it through when everyone else is giving up and just and just allowing themselves to be drawn away and 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 and, and pulled away by the allure of this world when everyone else is going crazy and having nervous breakdowns. When everyone else is 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 sort of just wringing their hands and and and, and worrying and how how can you stand there and and continue to believe and say that nothing is impossible with God? How how? That's one of the fireworks. That's one of the purposes. That's one of the whys. That we need the Holy Ghost in our lives. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said, is the comforter that can help you stay calm in the midst of chaos. That can help you stay cool as you're standing in the fire. That can help you stay collected when everyone around you done lost their mind. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. Amen? In any situation. Even when you're facing the hardest situations, you can have peace and you can have comfort in your soul. Where does it begin? It begins, it begins when the Spirit of God begins to deal with your heart and bring you to a place of saving faith in Christ where you say, I cannot do this on my own. Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you to come into my life. I need you to wash my spirit clean. I need you to forgive me of my sin. I need you to set me on a new path. I need you to order the steps of my path from this day forward. I need you to be not just my Savior when I get into trouble, but I need you to be my Lord every day. Let the, let the talk of my tongue and let, let my meditation of my heart, let it be focused upon you and be, bring glory and honor to your name every day of my life. It's the Spirit of God that brings us to that place. But then after that point of submission to Christ, the Spirit of God continues to be that comforter that brings that comfort and that peace that goes beyond any conventional realms of understanding. That, 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 that peace and that comfort where people look at you and say, how in the world can you be so calm right now? 
God when everything's crumbling around you? I don't understand it. That joy, unspeakable, full of glory that you can have even when there doesn't seem to be anything going on in your life that should be bringing any amount of joy or comfort or peace. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Even in the hardest of situations, you can have peace and you can have comfort in your soul. Amen. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. First thing, we need Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm, I'm going away. It's expedient for, for you that I do. But I'm not leaving you comfortless. I'll give you another comforter. That's the Holy Ghost. And you need the Holy Ghost of God in your life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number four, I know you're getting nervous now. The Holy Spirit teaches us God's will. Can I just do something before I move to this? Listen, if you're in this place, normally I do this after the service. But right now, if you're in this place and you're in that situation, and you're just like, I'll talk, I'll talk in two parts here real quickly. First of all, if you're here and, and, and you're just in a place of, of, of turmoil and, and, and you just don't know where to turn, where to go, what you're going to do next, and, and you realize I have made such a mess of my life trying to do it on my own. I cannot do this on my own anymore. I, I feel the Spirit of God drawing me and telling me that the time has come for me to turn my life over, stop trying to do it by myself, and to let the Lord lead and guide and be the Lord of my life. If that's you right now, why don't you just, why not right where you're sitting, right where you are, it's not between you and me, it's between you and God, why don't you just right now bow your heart, bow your head, and just say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I confess to you. I've been living in sin. I've been walking down the wrong path. I've been trying everything I can come up with, and everything I come up with has failed. But I acknowledge right now my sin before you. I confess my sin to you. And I acknowledge right now my need for you, Lord Jesus. I know you gave your life, shed your blood, and died for me to pay the price for my sin. And I believe that you died and you rose again three days later. And I ask you right now, forgive me of my sin. Set my spirit free. Be my Savior and be my Lord from this day forward. Give you my life for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. If that's you right now, you may not pray it exactly the way I prayed it. It might be as simple for you as just Lord Jesus. I am messed up royally. I'm living in sin. Please forgive me. Please set my spirit free. Be my Lord from this day forward. Amen. If that's you. That you, you don't have to wait for an altar call. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for a preacher to give you the magic, you know, the magic words or or some antidote. That's what it is. Lord Jesus, I need you. Only the Spirit of the Lord is in this place, moving and doing its work. But there are believers in this place right now. You've submitted your life to Jesus, but you're still struggling, and you're still you're still seeking direction. You're still hurting, and you're. You, 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 you know that the joy of the Lord is your strength, but you don't feel very joyous right now. You know that, the, that God offers you peace that passes all understanding, but man, you're struggling to maintain. You're struggling just to hold on right now. Why don't you just take just a moment right where you are and just say this, Holy Ghost of God, I have been resisting your work in my life. God, I confess that to you. That even though I know you're my comfort and you're my guide, I have been trying to figure it out on my own. I've been trying to fix it on my own. I've been trying to come up with, with my own answers. I've been, I've been trying to do it my way. But God, right now, I just, I just confess that to you. And I ask you to forgive me of that. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to fill this vessel fresh, and new in this moment. To comfort this mind, to comfort my mind, to comfort my heart, to lead me and to guide me, to give me instruction, convict me of the things I'm doing wrong. Help me to, to, to make things right. Lead me from this day forward. What are the steps of my path? I submit to you. God, 
I'm a, I'm a willing, open vessel for your spirit. And I ask you to fill me right now, fresh and new, with the Holy Ghost, that I may know your will and walk in the spirit. Obedience to you. In Jesus' name. Again, you may not pray it the way I said it. That's all right. If you need the Holy Ghost, Satan of God, don't ever think you, you, it's your job to figure it out on your own. I like the old song, Give Up and Let Jesus Take Hold all Over. Amen. Let the Spirit of God fill your vessel fresh and new right now. Spirit of the living God, fill these vessels fresh and new. Teach us your will. Convict us of our wrong steps. Help us to make them right. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me move on here. The Holy Spirit teaches us God's will. I'm going to have to just stick to my notes here. God, just, just bear with me. We're going to move kind of quick, all right? John 14, 26, and then, uh, and, then, and then we're going to go to chapter 16 and verse 13. Again, Jesus says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. If you go uh, to John 16 and verse 13, you'll see this. How be it, Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. You need the Holy Spirit of God in your life, saying of God. The, the, the Holy Ghost in your life. The, 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 this, this is what the Holy Spirit does. This is one of the things the Holy Spirit does. It's like when you have the Holy Ghost at operating in your life, in your spirit. This is what this is, it's like, it's like tuning in. To, to, a, to a spiritual radio wave that is always speaking the Word of God into your existence. Amen. Even when your mind is off somewhere else, that, 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 that's the Spirit of God is continuing to speak the promises of God, the truth of God into your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you ever been reading Scripture? And and had had something jump off the page like it like 3D. You've read it a million times, but all of a sudden it just like jumps off the page and smacks you in the face. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He teaches us. He brings the Word of God to life in our lives. He speaks to us, gives us insight that we don't have on our own. He's able to help us to know God's will. Here's why we need the Holy Ghost and as it relates to this point. Because one of the biggest issues that believers have is relinquishing our own will. Is finding our own Gethsemane. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done in the world. Amen? We know what we want and we want what we want. But what the Spirit of God will do is the Spirit of God will work from the inside, transforming, maybe little by little, maybe a whole lot slower than you wish it would happen, but transforming your will and conforming your will to the will of God. Amen. Did you know it was not the mind of it was it was not it was not the brain in Jesus' head that caused him that caused him to, to kneel down at that rock and say, nevertheless, not thy will, but my will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. It wasn't his brain. You know that? Because his brain said, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. It wasn't his flesh. It wasn't his feelings. It wasn't his emotions. All of that stuff said, if there's any other way, let's do it the other way. But then the Spirit of God within him began to rise up even in that moment of weakness. That moment where he was so weakened in his, he was so, he was so, he was so emotionally exhausted, so physically exhausted that the Bible said he prayed in such a way and travailed in such a way that his sweat was like drops of blood. 
But even in that moment, the Spirit of God rose up mightily within him. And he, and he capped all of that off by saying, Father, nevertheless, not what I want, but what you want. Let it be done. Let it be done. I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm frail. I'm worried. I'm, I, I'm anxious. I'm, I'm all of those things that the flesh brings. I'm all of those things. But, but, but the Spirit of God rose up within him. Let your will be done. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Spirit helps us to, to discover and conform to the will of God. Number five, the Holy Spirit helps us to remember. I'm just going to kind of throw some of this scripture out here and move as quickly as I can. So, but the Comforter, even the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send. Um, did, do we have that up there in the King James? Is that where we're at? John 14, 26. Uh, go back to it. Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. One of the biggest cop-outs, one of the biggest excuses in the body of Christ is this. Well, how, uh, uh, how, how am I supposed to remember everything Jesus said? How am I supposed to remember every command of God? How am I supposed to remember everything that God has said? Well, guess what? Uh, your little your little pea brain is not going to remember, <laughs> right? It's not going to unless you've got some super uh, super powered uh, uh, type of photographic memory. You're not going to remember it all. But listen. Here's what, here's what happens. The Spirit of God within you is like having that yet. Do you remember going into the library and, and they had these, uh, these little files and they had all these little index cards? And what happened was uh, even the librarian who pretty much lived there didn't know every book that they had on the shelf and certainly didn't know every subject contained in those, in those books. But that librarian could go and could find whatever you were looking for with just a, with just a twinkle of her fingers, right? Uh, just, just find it all there. And then, <laughs> because it was all contained. That's what the Spirit of God is. In this moment, this is what you need. And the Spirit of God will take and plug that into your, into your mind, into your thought process. And you'll just be like, whoa, I didn't even know I knew that. Guess what? You didn't. But the Spirit of God does. Amen. <laughs> oh, goodness. We need the Spirit of God to help us to remember. Now, let me just say this. There's not a librarian. I know it's all computers now. Even computers. Computers are smarter than librarians, I think, most of the time when they work. Um, but even the smartest librarian or the super the supercomputer, okay, cannot pull up a file that does not exist. If the file hasn't been installed, that computer can't pull it up. If that information hasn't been added to the catalog, that, that librarian is not going to be able to find that information. But if it's in there, the librarian can find it. Amen? That's what the Spirit of God does. That having the Holy Ghost of God is not an excuse to just say, oh, well, I don't even need to read the Bible. I don't even need to spend time in God's Word. I don't, need to, I don't even need to, I don't need to do any of that. I got the Holy Ghost working within my life, and so I don't need to do any of that. The Holy Ghost knows it all. Yeah, but listen, if you want the Holy Spirit to be able to be, to be able to access that information in your catalog, you need to put it. It may not be a memory verse that you can just draw up in your brain and quote it chapter and verse. I understand that. But it's got to be in the catalog. It's got to, you've got to install the file. Does that make sense? Amen. That was just a little extra. It didn't cost you anything. All right, here's number six. The Holy Spirit gives us power to overcome the devil. I was just waiting for the shout. It's happening downstairs, all right? The shout came from downstairs. That was weird, right? But nobody shouted up here, so I'm going to say it one more time. The Holy Spirit gives us power to overcome the devil. Look at here, First, uh, uh, first John 4.4. 4. I love this. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's shouting words right there. Them shouting words. One commentator on this verse actually says it like this. 
Greater is the Holy Spirit which is in you than the spirit which controls the world. Greater is the Holy Spirit, capital S, than the spirit, little s, that controls the world. Unless we have the Holy Spirit working in our lives, the promises and the truths that we learn from God's word are unattainable because the enemy we face is too strong for us on our own. Amen? Remember that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Right? We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. If, 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 if our enemy, if that one that Jesus said is out to steal and kill and destroy, if our enemy was flesh and blood and we could just, we could just deal in, in natural ways, listen, we could all save up, we could learn the lesson early in our lives, start saving up very early to buy a tank. Then once we had a tank and maybe a newsie to accompany it, we wouldn't have any other worries in our lives, right? We'd just shoot the devil, blow him up, blast him, and it'd be all over. But we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not war against flesh and blood. This is a spiritual war. And how many of you know that if you're going to win in spiritual warfare, you need spiritual weapons? Yes. You need spiritual comrades. Amen? You need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our enemy is supernatural. And it requires to fight our enemy. It requires supernatural power to defeat him. And that's where the Holy Ghost comes into the picture. Because it's not by might. It's not by power. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Willpower is not going to get it done. Support from friends won't get, get, get you the victory. It's nice to have all that stuff. But it is... It, it, it's, it's, the, it's the Holy Spirit that empowers us to fight in, in this spiritual arena, a spiritual arena where we can gain the victory. Amen? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to quick, I gave you one more thing about this, okay? Um, and then I'll move on to, verse, to number seven. We're almost there, okay? But if you're having trouble fighting the devil, if it seems that you're constantly on the short end of the stick, you're constantly... Um, you're constantly the one that is that is uh, on the losing end in this fight. You need a renewal of the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Amen. Operating in you so that you can effectively fight. That, that leads us to number seven. The Holy Spirit empowers us, not just for the war, but it, the Holy Spirit empowers us for service. Somebody say service. 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 If you are saved and not serving, you're missing a big part of your salvation experience. Can I just say that? That's not my sermon today, but I just want to let you know that. If you are saved and not serving, you are missing a big part of your salvation experience. There's a reason that you are saved and yet you feel unfulfilled. And, and, and most usually the reason is you are not serving in a capacity that is, that is allowing you to feel as though you are operating in and functioning in the will of God and the purpose of God for your life. A man finds somewhere to serve. Find something to do. Find something to do. You will find more fulfillment. You will find more fulfillment swirling a toilet brush in, a, in, a, in, in, in the stool for God than you will by not doing anything. Maybe I didn't say that the right way. If you're not doing anything for God, there is a missing part of your salvation experience. You need to be serving somewhere. And if the only place you can find to serve, if the only open door in the moment is a toilet brush or a vacuum or a lawnmower, pick up that toilet brush. That's right. Plug in that vacuum. Crank up that lawnmower. And do something for the kingdom of God. You'll find fulfillment in that. Amen? The Spirit of God empowers us for that service. According to Scripture... And, and, and the history of the early church, the Holy Spirit is crucial for Christian service. Go to um, Acts chapter 6. I want you to look at this. The disciples needed assistance in doing the business of the church, right? They were, it was coming to a point where they were, uh, where some of the administrative things were becoming so overwhelming 
uh, that that they weren't that they weren't able to, uh, to to give themselves to the to the ministry more of the ministry side of ministry, and so they needed some assistance. Well, well, when you when you look here in Acts chapter six and verse three, you see what they're looking for uh, to fill this role. And here is uh, guess what one of the one of the primary aspects. Uh, one of the primary attributes that they were looking for uh, was to determine if a person was qualified for service. Look at this. Uh, Acts 6, verse 3. See it there? Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. They looked for men who had natural ability, yes, who, who, who had committed themselves. Yes, they were full of wisdom. But they, they, they thought it every bit is necessary. In fact, more necessary. Understand that it says full of the Holy Ghost before it even lists wisdom. You can be a dummy. It's more important to us. It's more important to us that you have the Holy Ghost than that you know everything there is to know. Not that wisdom is not important. It is. It's on the list. They were looking for people who are full of the Holy Ghost. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you're not serving, again, something is wrong. Because the Holy Ghost of God is a servant. Always serving Christ. Always about the business of uplifting and serving Christ. Amen. Amen. Number eight. The Holy Spirit communicates for us and through us. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of of God. See, the Holy Spirit is our direct pipeline to the Father. When we pray in, in tongues, I know that's something we know the church don't like to talk about anymore, but listen, I still believe in it. I still, I still practice that belief. Amen? Let me tell you why I believe in it, because I know it works. I told you last week, the reason we need the fireworks of the Holy Ghost is because the fire works. Amen. I know it works. The reason when we pray in, in, in tongues and in other tongues in accordance as, as, as the Spirit gives the utterance, we are praying in a special prayer language that allows us to communicate with God and bypass all of that other mess. And we, and we pray what we should pray even when we don't know what we should pray. You ever had a moment you didn't even know where to start praying? You're like, God, I, I don't even know, I don't even know where to start. But when you begin to pray in the spirit, it bypasses all of that stuff that you do know and all of that stuff that you don't know. It's a direct conversation line. It's a direct connection between you and God. Amen. First Corinthians 14, 2 says. For he that speaketh in a tongue, in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Amen. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. You know what this is talking about? It's a language that only God can understand. So the devil can't break into the conversation. Cares and, 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 and hurts and fears and anxieties and, 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 sin, and sinful desires and this and that. None of those things can break into that conversation. None of those things. Because it's a language that only God understands. And, and let me just say this. Be very clear. Speaking in tongues is, is certainly not the whole cake as it relates to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's work in our lives and in us and through us. But it is the icing on the cake. And if you've ever had a cake without icing, you understand that icing is pretty important. Amen? Praise the Lord. I figured I'd at least get an amen on that. 
It's an important part. We'll talk more about that next week. Because there's some, there's some things we need to clarify next week. I don't have time this week. Number nine, the Holy Spirit empowers us to witness. This is what Jesus says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. Not you might be. Not you might be inclined to be. Not you might feel like you want to get involved in witnessing. No, Jesus says, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you will have power and you will be my witnesses. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, under the uttermost parts of the earth. You know what Jesus is saying there when he says Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth? He's saying pretty much everyone you encounter, you're going to want to be their witness. You're going to want to serve as witness. You're going to want to give an example. Amen. The Holy Spirit enables us for this purpose. Amen. Let me go. Uh, to, to, let me tell you what my last point is. I understand that I have, I have, <laughs> I have tackled a task that seemed impossible. Um, wait, wait a minute, Pastor. You're going to do ten points, and you've already talked about. Well, with God, all things are possible. And here we are to point number ten. And you're going to love this. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual. Gifts. Do you not understand that I have given you nine whys, nine purposes of the Holy Ghost without even getting into the gifts of the Spirit? See, we always we just want to jump to the gifts. Give me the gifts, give me the gifts, give me the gifts. But we gotta know the why and appreciate the why. By the way, uh, number 10 is the Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts. I guess I already told you that, right? We're not going to talk about that today. Uh, we're going we're gonna to spend our time next week talking about that because there's a lot to cover there. Maybe there's not maybe 10 points worth uh, to cover there. There's a lot of, uh, or at least I won't present it as 10 points. That way you don't get too scared. Amen? But there's a lot of ground to cover. And I want to hit the ground running next week. We've set it up. We're going to get into talking about those gifts. Amen. Here's the bottom line. If you have ever felt like, I don't understand that Holy Spirit stuff. I know I've heard it all my life. I've been around it. Or maybe you haven't been around it all your life. Maybe it's new to you. Whatever your situation is, let me just tell you this. You may not understand it all. I don't understand it all. Amen. So much of, of, of the Spirit of God and the will of God and the purpose of God and all the things of God are so far beyond our conventional understanding. But that's why we need the Holy Ghost. Let me just tell you this. Let me just tell you this. If you are saved, if you are born again, the next step, the next step, and, and I'm not going to say you should think about it. I'm not going to say it like that because I believe that's unbiblical. The Bible doesn't tell you that once you have come to a saving knowledge of Christ, you should consider seeking God's Spirit and the, and the fullness and the baptism of God's Spirit in your life. The Bible doesn't tell us that. The Bible said, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, listen, you've been following after me for a few years. Now, listen, here's what's going to happen. You're going you're gonna to go up there. You're going to lock yourself in that upper room until the Holy Ghost is poured out on you. Don't come out of that room. Don't get out of accord. You stay there. You seek the promise of the Father. And when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, you will be my witnesses. And I, I just got to, I, I mean, what were the disciples thinking in that moment? You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. And some of them disciples, because Peter was in the group, I mean, some of them had to be thinking, well, wait a minute, what have we been doing for the last three years? We've been running around here telling everybody that you are, you're, you're, you're Jesus, and you're that healer that everybody's heard about, and you're the Son of God, and what, what have we been doing for the last for the last three years. Have you ever thought about this? But now Jesus says, after that the Holy Ghost will come upon you, you will be my witnesses. Well, what have we been doing for the last three years? We've been gaining knowledge. We've been learning from my example. We've been training. But when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that's your graduation moment. And from this day forward, from that moment forward, you can call yourself a true witness of Christ. Because you have within you the true witness of Christ. 
Church, we don't need to consider the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. Saint of God, you don't need to consider the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know I don't have time to preach all that out. we got to be dismissed. But you come back next week, we're going to get a little bit deeper into this.